The top stories tonight and why news. President Rodrigo Duterte has committed to procure face masks and distribute them to people who cannot afford face coverings. President Rodrigo Duterte approves face-to-face -face classes in low-risk MGCQ areas in January 2021. Quezon City-run hospitals now in critical bed capacity, according to Mayor Joy Belmonte. House leadership wants to allocate up to 500 billion pesos for COVID-19 programs in 2021. Australia extends job support as new COVID-19 outbreaks threaten its economy. European Union leaders reach a recovery deal after a marathon summit. Good evening, Philippines and the world. Today is Tuesday, July 21, 2020. I am Harlene Delgado. Join us in the next hour as we deliver today's top stories around the globe. I'm Angelo Castro III. We are also seen in 1,935 satellite monitoring centers nationwide and via live streaming worldwide through the UNTV News and Rescue social media accounts and our website, untvweb.com. I am William Theo. First in the news, President Rodrigo Duterte has committed to procure face masks and distribute them to people who cannot afford face coverings. Our Malacanang correspondent, Rosalie Cos, will join us tonight to tell us why live. Yes, Rosalie. Arlene, President Rodrigo Duterte highlights the importance of wearing face covering now that we are battling coronavirus pandemic. Also, he appealed once again to the public to wear face masks and observe social distancing when going outdoors. Here's the statement of President Duterte. Social distancing. Huwag kayong magsigaw-sigaw man nakadikit-dikit. Mask. America, Russia, lahat, China, mask. Ito, importante talaga. Ngayon, kung wala kayo, I will try to buy as many as I can afford. Kung kaya ko, bigay namin yan sa inyo libre. But wear it. The country's chief executive, however, admits it is a huge challenge to implement regulations to contain the coronavirus outbreak in the country. He said the success of the battle depends much on the local government units. He also directed the police to strictly implement anti-coronavirus quarantine measures. Let's listen to the statement of the chief executive. We'll have to ask our police to be more strict. So holy hint, uh, a little uh, shame would put them on notice forever. Also, according to the Interior Department, the IATF and the local chief executives have agreed to create a unified ordinance on localized lockdowns and public health standards, as well as the handling of locally stranded individuals, among others. Harleen? Uh, Rosalie, the president also approved the face-to-face uh, -face classes in January 2021. Rosalie, why did Education Secretary Briona say this is a case-to-case -case basis? Education Secretary Leonor Briones formally presented during the IATF meeting with President Duterte last night the proposal to conduct limited face-to-face -face learning. The Education Chief reiterated this is case-to-case -case basis and certain requirements must be met. Limited face-to-face -face learning will be allowed only in modified general community quarantine low-risk areas by January next year. Face-to-face -face classes will be allowed beginning January 2021. Several private schools have started limited face-to-face -face classes last month and they will be allowed to continue. Due coordination should be made between DepEd, the concerned local governments, and the local health authorities on decisions to allow limited localized face-to-face -face classes. 
stringent health standards will be allowed. The National Task Force will carry out the pilot testing and inspections of compliance with health standards and protocols. President Duterte has approved this. Let's listen to the statement of Secretary Bionis and President Duterte. For basic education, uh, we are um, saying that maybe we can allow limited face-to-face -face learning but to be strictly regulated in the light of present conditions. Let's try to make uh, ourselves productive even how constricted the times are. Okay, I'm on. Meanwhile, according to Secretary Briones, based on data, the impact of COVID-19 on children is not as severe on adults. In more than 67,000 COVID-19 cases in the country, 2,000 cases involve children and there have been 16 deaths. Harleen? Thank you so much, Rosa De Coz, for that report. The Philippine National Police will assist the Department of Education in the opening of classes on August 24. According to PNP Chief Police General Archie Gamboa, police personnel will secure places of convergence for students who will travel to school. The PNP Chief adds they already have a security plan ready and they will meet with schools and other stakeholders to finalize it. Local police units will be responsible in providing security to places of convergence, transportation hubs, and learning institutions to protect the students, teachers, and parents from criminal elements who may take advantage of the situation. The PNP chief added they are ready to give protection to teachers in remote areas and raise crime awareness among students through the police co teacher co program. The police will also assist in this year's Brigada Escuela. DepEd Bicol ranks third among regions in terms of high percentage of enrollment turnout for the next school year. Brian Baldarraje reports why. Department of Education Region 5 has surpassed its targeted number of enrollees for school year 2020 to 2021. This after reaching 82.36% of last year's enrollment. Now, DepEd Bicol ranks third among 17 regions in terms of high percentage of enrollment turnout in the country. Bicol is next to Region 8 or Eastern Visayas with 85.68% and Mimaropa with 83.63%. Based on DepEd Region 5 recent data, 101,878 pupils are enrolled in kindergarten, 726,981 pupils in elementary, 493,970 in junior high school, and 198,164 in senior high school. That's about 1.5 million enrollees in total. Ang tinatarget po natin sa public schools, uh, 1.6 million at least 75 to 80 percent of that 1.6 million ay maibalik natin sa uh, paaralan or sa learning ngayong school year. And yung 1.5 million na nai-register ngayon, eh, that's more than the target natin. May mga schools, private schools pa na hindi pa nag-open ng DepEd Region 5 says it is still optimistic it can reach 100 percent or even more as there are still learners to gather. It will also continue to accommodate late enrollees. It also continues to carry out regional virtual parents and teachers association forum to inform parents about their role in DEPED's basic education learning continuity plan. Brian Baldarraje, UNTV News and Rescue. We serve the people. We give glory to God. Meanwhile, Occidental Mindoro now requires locally stranded individuals and overseas Filipinos to present a negative COVID-19 result before entry to the province. Oriental Mindoro Governor Humerlito Bons Dolor has signed an order that requires LSIs and OFWs returning to the province to present a negative RT-PCR test result for COVID-19. This move comes after more LSIs and OFWs who arrived in the, in the province rather, tested positive for the disease 
who are now more than 10. Governor Delor has also requested the Regional Interagency Task Force Against COVID-19 to suspend the entry to the province during weekends to give way to the disinfection of ships, vehicles, and facilities used for LSIs and OFWs. The provincial government calls for cooperation from the public in this fight against COVID-19. A second COVID-19 referral hospital opens in Davao City. Davao Doctor Hospital's Dumoy Satellite Facility has an 18-bed capacity and two intensive care unit beds for critical COVID-19 patients. According to Mayor Sara Duterte Carpio, if cases of coronavirus infections in the city continue to increase, Southern Philippines Medical Center would be overwhelmed. The city mayor hopes that with lockdown measures and continuous reminder to the public about the health protocols, the city would not need to open all its reserved hospitals for COVID-19 patients. Presidential spokesman Harry Roque did not hold his regular press briefing today in the new executive building in Malacanang. This after one employee of the Presidential Communications Operations Office tested positive for COVID-19. Thus, the building was ordered to be closed for disinfection. Work has been suspended starting today. Based on an advisory from the PCOO, swab testing for primary and secondary contacts of the COVID-19 positive employee will be conducted. Panandalian pong uh, sinarado ang uh, new executive building kung nasan po ang ating tanggapan at kung nasan ang ating press room. So palapit na po ang COVID, nakapasok po sa new executive building pero hindi po nating papayagan na matigil ng COVID ang ating pang-araw-araw na katungkulan sa taong bayan na magbigay ng balita sa mga bagay-bagay na nakaka-apekto po sa kanilang pang-araw-araw na buhay. Mayor Joy Belmonte says they need to address the problem that Quezon City continues to record more and more patients infected with the new coronavirus. Jo Anano tells us why. Five major hospitals located in Quezon City have announced they have reached their full bed capacity for COVID-19 patients. These are the National Kidney and Transplant Institute or NKTI, St. Luke's Medical Center, Capital Medical Center, Veterans Memorial Medical Center, and Philippine Children's Medical Center or PCMC. But apart from this, three other hospitals run by the Quezon City government are now in critical capacity. Those are Quezon City General Hospital, Novaliches District Hospital, and Rosario Maclang Bautista General Hospital. Based on data from the QC government, of the 103 beds for COVID-19 patients in QCGH, only 8 are vacant now, while in Rosario Maclang Bautista General Hospital, only 7 beds remain unoccupied. But Novaliches District Hospital has reached its full bed capacity of 23. Ngayon lang po ako umaga nakatanggap ng report na medyo uh, naka, nasa critical stage na po na kailangan na rin po nating aksyonan itong uh, pagdami ng kanilang mga pasyente. Meanwhile, the city government has also established three quarantine facilities also known as home facilities with more than 500 bed capacity. As of now, only 95 beds are vacant in these isolation facilities. According to Quezon City Mayor Joy Belmonte, they are set to open another quarantine facility next week which can help decongest hospitals of COVID-19 patients. Hopefully, itong mga facilities natin makakatulong sa pag-decongest sa ating mga ospital, lalong-lalo na kung hindi naman serious ang mga sakit na mga nasa mga ospital natin. So, ang ating layunin, our hospitals will just be for severe and critical cases. Quezon City remains to be the locality in Metro Manila with the highest number of coronavirus cases. Joa Nano, UNTV News and Rescue. We serve the people, we give glory to God. The government cannot test all Filipinos according to the country's health chief. Our health correspondent, Aiko Miguel, will explain why. There are people and groups of people who are prioritized for testing for coronavirus infection, considering the country's testing capacity. This was Health Secretary Francisco Duque III's response to President Duterte's question if the country now has the capacity to test all Filipinos. Hindi naman po natin pwedeng i-test ang bawat mamamayan. Uh, wala pong bansa ang nakakagawa nito, kahit na po ang pinakamayaman, katulad ng United States of America. Ang kanilang testing uh, eh, asa 40 million na, Mr. President. 
and that's uh, almost uh, uh, close to 9% of the total population of the U.S. of about 370 million Americans. But Secretary Duque clarifies the government targets to test 10 million Filipinos or 10% of the entire Philippine population come 2021. With this, the Philippines would surpass the USA's ratio in its testing capacity. Currently, the country has a daily testing output of 25,000 and 90 licensed testing labs. Ang target po natin is 10 million uh, Filipinos to be tested by uh, uh, 2021. And... Uh, we hope to be able to uh, do the test uh, at 32,000 to about 40,000 a day. Although not all Filipinos will be tested for COVID-19, there are subgroups added to the list of people prioritized to be tested based on the DOH expanded testing guidelines. Last week, the DOH announced there would be additional groups who will undergo COVID-19 testing based on Department Memorandum Order Number 2020-0258A. One is subgroup J. This includes frontline and economy workers. Those are workers in the transport and logistics, food retail, education and financial service industry, non-food retail workers, service providers, market vendors, construction workers, water supply, sewerage and waste management workers, public sector and mass media employees. The DOH also encourages private companies to have their employees tested for the new coronavirus every quarter at the employer's expense in order to avoid lockdowns that might bring even more damage to their companies. The health department also assures there are enough test kits for frontliners in the country. We still have a lot of testing kits. It's about uh, 2 million plus testing kits still left. Uh, para gamitin natin no dito sa goal natin na gusto natin para maka magkaroon tayo ng uh, sustained capacity for this. Ay ko Miguel, UNTV News and Rescue. We serve the people, we give glory to God. The Cagayan de Oro City Health Office reminds the public to be cautious to prevent dengue cases amid the coronavirus pandemic. It is also thankful that the more than 500 dengue cases from January to July 18, 2020 is a 60% decrease from cases recorded during the same time period last year. According to Dr. Jose Dito Retuya Jr., the City Health Office epidemiologist that decline in dengue cases was a result of every Barangay's cooperation with health authorities. They remind the public as it is the rainy season, maintain the cleanliness of the surroundings and remove the stagnant water where mosquitoes could possibly breed. The leadership of the lower house of Congress highlights the importance of allocating huge funds for the government's COVID-19 response for next year, as well as the creation of a Department of Arts and Culture. One of our senior correspondents, Ray Pelayo, will tell us why. House Speaker Alan Peter Cayetana notes that he wants the national government to allot half a trillion pesos for programs that will combat the COVID-19 pandemic in 2021. The official also wants to give the government a free hand where and when to use the fund. And if it would not be used for COVID-19 response projects, it could be diverted to agricultural or livelihood programs. Cayetano also highlighted the importance of having a Department of Arts and Culture that will promote and source market around the world for Filipino arts and talents. He cited the government of Korea who supports K-pop and K-drama which are now popular worldwide. So the talent of the Filipinos Meanwhile, Cayetano said the House of Representatives shows eagerness in amending the Constitution. But pushing it now is more challenging, especially the conduction of plebiscite while implementing community quarantine measures. The official mentioned that lawmakers can still address other issues. Ray Pelayo, UNTV News and Rescue. We serve the people. We give glory to God. But demand for computer set in Gilmore, Quezon City increases. Let's find out why from Asher Kadapan Jr. Gilmore Avenue in New Manila, Quezon City is known for computer and computer peripheral stores. Here, 
customers can save about 3,000 to 5,000 pesos for a desktop or laptop. Eh, sinabi lang po kasi ng tropa namin na marami daw mas mura dito. So, kung baga, ito po yung mga shops na trusted. Feeling ko tapat naman po yung price. Kaya, easy, easy, easy rin po para mag-take risk na bumili. John Martin Sinuto, a work-from-home employee, came all the way from the Valiches to buy a computer in Gilmore. Walang binigakitaan eh. Naisip na lang namin na mag-invest muna sa computer para makadagdag sa magtatrabaho po sa amin. The manager of one of the stores in Gilmore, Fidel Jeffrey Lumen, said the demand for computer set has increased since they reopened in May 16. Paramihan na nagahanap ngayon is yung mga pang work from home. So ang in-offer namin sa kanila is yung mga laptops na mga entry level na although pwede na sa mga pang student din. Although meron ding desktop. Based on the price list in Gilmore, the cheapest brand new computer suitable for online homeschooling ranges from 15,000 to 20,000 pesos, while work from home employees may acquire a new computer with prices that range from 30,000 pesos to 40,000 pesos. But due to the increasing demand, shops face challenges in procuring computers and peripherals from their suppliers. Dumami ang demand kaya lang si supplier walang may provide. Kasi siguro naiipit din yung mga stocks natin dun sa ano bago ipadala sa atin. Kung baga ngayon halos lahat kung tatawagin mo, sa sobrang dami nagkaroon ng shortage po yung supplier mismo. Computer store operators advise buyers to inquire via their telephone, website or social media accounts before walking into their stores to avoid influx of customers and to comply with the health protocols. Asher Kadapan Jr., UNTV News and Rescue. We serve the people. We give glory to God. Manila City continues its drive through testing for COVID-19 plus a walk-in testing center. Vincent Arboleda tells us why. The city government of Manila wants to make it more easier for the public to be tested for the coronavirus disease 2019. According to Mayor Esco Moreno Domagoso, the city wants to open its boundaries and treat the virus as a universal problem and not just of the cities. That is why they have launched two drive through testing centers to provide free access to COVID-19 testing to the riding public. Since the drive through COVID-19 testing center started last week at Andres Bonifacio Monument, the number of motorists who got tested has reached 878 based on July 20 data. 603 were tested at the Quirino Grandstand on July 20. Testing is free and people just need to bring a valid ID, fill up a form and fall in line. The Manila Health Department personnel will take blood sample for this process. Results will be sent to the contact number provided by the person tested either within the day or the following day. Manila City resident or not can avail of the free testing. Leonor Navarro, a resident of Manila, said she waited in line as early as 3 in the morning just to make sure she's COVID-19 free. Gusto ko lang maging safe, kaya ako nagpapa-rapid test sana. JR Carpuz rode his motorcycle from San Juan before dawn just to be early in the queue. Simula po ng alas 3 po hanggang ngayon po sa... Alas 3 ng madaling araw? Opo. Hanggang ngayon, mahababa yung kila kanina? Mahababa po sa hanggang po dun sa may ano... Sa may highway po, sa may stoplight. JR said he needs the results before he returns to his job. Edgar Marcelo, who came from Las Piñas City, traveled to the drive through testing center in Manila together with some of his employees to avail of the free test. Mga 2.30 uh, ng uh, madaling araw, nandito na kami. Nagaling pa kami sa, ano, sa Las Piñas. Magkaroon lang kami ng peace of mind. The Manila City government has also opened a walk-in COVID-19 testing center at the Hospital ng Sampaloc. The walk-in testing center are for individuals who have no vehicle. It is also open to all. Vincent Arboleda, UNTV News and Rescue. We serve the people. We give glory to God. Following the death of high-profile inmate J.B. Sebastian, the camp of Senator Laila de Lima believes this will not affect the drug charges against the opposition senator. Yesterday, the Department of Justice has confirmed that Sebastian and several other high-profile inmates have died due to COVID-19. Sebastian was a convicted carnapper and a witness in two drug-related charges against de Lima. According to one of the senator's legal counsel, attorney 
Attorney Filibon Tajardon, the death of Sebastian will not affect the case as the charges against the senator are all lies. Tajardon said, based on Sebastian test Sebastian's testimony, the late convict claimed he collected money from drug lords inside the new Bolivian prison to fund the Lima senatorial campaign in 2013. Naniniwala kami na lahat ng itong mga istorya na to ay hindi totoo at gawa-gawa lamang. Ang intensyon lang talaga ay mabigyan ng paraan para maikulong si Sen. De Lima. Walang tinagkaiba si J.B. Sebastian dyan. Ang kanyang kwento ay bawang big. Kaya naniniwala kami na wala rin epekto yan. At yung kung sana naka, na, nakapag-testify siya, ganoon din ang aming gagawin. I-expose din namin kung ano yung ano yung contradiction dahil yung mga sinasabi ng mga witnesses actually naglalaban-laban na nag-aaway-away na in a statement, the lady senator maintains the charges against her are all fake and lies, even if the administration can have a hundred live witnesses against her. She adds she will not wonder if dead witnesses can still be made to rise from the grave and testify against her, given the personal stake on the cases of the so-called dictator and the state of the country's justice system. De Lima also raised an alarm on the serious conditions in the country's prisons during the pandemic, noting that the COVID-19 disease is not a joke. The lady senator ends her dispatch from Camp Krame, saying it is time for the administration to step down and hand over the government to Vice President Lenny Robredo, whom she describes as more capable and tireless. Department of Justice, for its part, says the death of Sebastian does not significantly affect the overall strategy of the prosecution in the criminal charges against De Lima. Yesterday, Senate President Vicente Soto III has filed a resolution seeking to investigate the deaths of high-profile inmates inside the new Bolivian prison. The Senate leader says that due to unclear, inaccurate, and unverified reports, speculations are now being made as to whether or not those Bolivian inmates actually died due to COVID-19. For Senate President Pro Tempore Ralph Recto, a proof of death such as photos of the body along with death certificates and medical reports should be presented to the Justice Secretary so that doubts will be laid to rest. Meanwhile, Senate Blue Ribbon Committee Chair Richard Gordon says officials of the Bureau of Corrections may be held liable over grave misconduct for the lack of transparency and failure to report to the DOJ and the Supreme Court the deaths of high-profile inmates. Jago and William, we are on board the UN TV radio mobile booth and we are here in Kazan Avenue in South Triangle, Kazan City. Let's take a look at the situation on the road. So far, we have a light traffic flow for motorists coming from Edsa and Elliptical Road going to Espana, Manila. Meanwhile, we also have a light to at times moderate traffic on the other side of the road for vehicles coming from Manila going to Edsa. And for our weather update. The Intertropical Convergence Zone or ITCZ is affecting Southern Luzon, Visayas and Mindanao. State Weather Bureau Pagasa says this will bring cloudy skies with scattered rain showers and thunderstorms over Visayas, Mimaropa, Bicol Region, Northern Mindanao, Zamboanga Peninsula and Quezon Province. Meanwhile, Metro Manila and the rest of the country may experience partly cloudy to cloudy skies with isolated rain showers due to the ITCZ or localized thunderstorms. Possible flash floods or landslides may occur during severe thunderstorms. No tropical cyclone advisory is issued. Let's now take a closer look at the updated count of coronavirus cases around the world. The COVID-19 pandemic has now reached a total of over 14.7 million confirmed cases in 188 countries, regions and sovereignty. That is after countries reported about 230,000 new cases from yesterday. Of the more than 14.7 million confirmed cases globally, close to 7.6 million 
million are from the Americas, more than 3 million from Europe, over 1.4 million from Southeast Asia, and the rest are from East Mediterranean, Africa, and Western Pacific. The fast-spreading disease has claimed over 610,000 lives, while more than 8.3 million patients across the globe have recovered from the new coronavirus infection. Thanks be to God. Meanwhile, the country's Department of Health, or DOH, says that 1,951 new cases were reported today from total tests done by 73 out of 89 laboratories. That raises the total confirmed cases of coronavirus infections in the Philippines to 70,764 of the new cases today. The highest is from the national capital region with 1,464, followed by Cebu with 90, Laguna 74 cases, Cavite has 53 new patients, and Rizal has 36. There are 45,646 cases as of active cases as of today. 91.1 of those active cases are in in mild condition. We have lost two more patients, but through our fervent prayers, medical interventions, and sacrifices of our medical frontliners, 209 more people have won their battle against the invisible enemy. That brings the total number of recoveries nationwide to 23,281. Thanks be to God. The Southern Police District confirms it sent a notice to the De Los Santos family to vacate the police quarters in Taguig City. Our police correspondent, Lea Ilagan, will tell us why. It was January this year when the Southern Police District sent a notice to De Los Santos family to vacate the PNP quarters in Taguig after the retirement of Police Executive Master Surgeon Arnel De Los Santos. SPD Director, Police Brigadier General Emmanuel Peralta explained that De Los Santos had asked for an extension but the NCRPO did not approve his request because he was already retired. Nagpadala po siya ng uh, letter na kaadres sa ating uh, Regional Director na nakikiusap na sana ay uh, palawigin pa yung kanyang pagtira doon sa RDSU office. At sinagot po yun ng uh, ating uh, Camp Commander ng uh, Regional Headquarters at uh, disapprove po yun, disapprove po ng ating uh, Regional Director. So yun po ay uh, nung uh, February, January and February of this year. Then uh, hindi po siya na-follow up na policy dahil nga nagkaroon na tayo ng uh, COVID crisis. De Los Santos did not show up when the NCRPO invited him to talk about the property. Last Monday, PNP Chief Police General Archie Gamboa said, based on the existing rules of the PNP, officers and personnel are given only a month to vacate the PNP quarters after their retirement. Peralta added Meralco also discovered that the quarters where De Los Santos stayed had an illegal electrical connection. At sa pag po ay uh, may nakita na discover yung ating technician na merong jumper connection papunta doon sa sa room na inoccupy nung De Los Santos family. Then uh, sa pagsusuri po namin, tiningnan natin yung monthly billing average natin sa RHU ng RDSU ay nagre-reflect po ng uh, 40,000 a month. Pero nung tiningnan namin lahat ng mga facility ng equipment doon sa RDSU building ay uh, tatlong valve lamang at isang TV ang nandoon. The SPD will investigate the De Los Santos family for the illegal power connection to one of SPD's offices. Leia Ilagan, UNTV News and Rescue. We serve the people, we give glory to God. The Presidential Security Group will conduct heightened security measures for President Rodrigo Duterte. Duterte's fifth State of the Nation address at the Batasan Pambansa on July 27. Based on the PSG statement, they are working closely with other government agencies involved to ensure a 360-degree shield for their president and the safety of the entire venue. Additional health security measures will also be enforced with the ongoing pandemic. Meanwhile, according to presidential spokesman Harry Roque, only 15 cabinet members will be allowed to attend the sauna. Member of the president's family will be present in the event. 
And uh, for the news abroad, here's Maria Lataza live from Perth, Australia. Good evening, Marielle. What have you got for us tonight? Good evening, William. Uh, today, the Australian government announced it will spend 16.8 billion Australian dollars to extend its wage subsidies for businesses hit by the coronavirus pandemic. Also, European Union leaders have finally struck a deal on coronavirus recovery package. And I will give details why travelers flying to China must prove they have recently tested negative for COVID-19 before they board an aircraft. Go ahead, Marielle. Please tell us why. The Australian government announced today it will spend 16.8 billion Australian dollars to extend its wage subsidies for businesses hit by the coronavirus pandemic. The six-month extension of the program allays fears a hard end to the current 70 billion Australian dollar scheme, originally scheduled for September 30, would prolong Australia's first recession in three decades. However, subsidies will be reduced under the new program, which runs through to March 28 and is expected to cover about 1 million workers. The wage supplements have helped 3.5 million Australians and are widely credited with propping up the ailing economy after widespread social distancing restrictions paralyzed businesses. European Union leaders have struck a deal on a huge post-coronavirus recovery package following a fourth night of talks. It will see the 27-nation bloc offering 750 billion euros in grants and loans to the counter the economy impact of the pandemic. Summit Chairman Charles Michel said it was a pivotal moment for Europe. Talks which began on Friday saw a split between nations hardest hit by the outbreak and frugal members who were concerned about costs. The deal centers on a 390 billion euro program of grants to member states hardest hit by the pandemic. Italy and Spain are expected to be the main recipients. A further 360 billion euros in low interest loans will be available to members of the bloc. The package will now face more technical ne negotiations by member states and need ratification by the European Parliament. Chinese aviation authorities have said passengers who book flights to the country must prove they have recently tested negative for COVID-19 before they board. Provide false certificates and information shall bear corresponding legal liabilities, the CAAC warned. This move aims to ensure the health and safety of international travel and reduce the risk of cross-border spread of the pandemic. Passengers on flights coming to China. Let us now take a closer look at the updated count of coronavirus cases in countries worst hit by the pandemic. The United States of America has now reached more than 3.8 million confirmed coronavirus cases, with close to 1.7 million recoveries. Brazil, still second among nations with highest COVID cases, now has more than 2.1 million confirmed positives and surpassed the 80,000 mark for death cases. India has the world's third, lar third largest caseload of COVID-19. Russia remains fourth with more than 780,000 cases. South Africa is the country on the African continent with the most cases, with more than 373,000 cases, but with close to 195,000 recoveries. Thanks be to God. And those are the reasons behind the news here in Australia and in other parts of the globe. Back to you, William. Yes, uh, thank you, Marielle. You stay safe there in Perth, Australia. Professional American football stars took to social media to demand the league to set clear protocols as training camps open. Now they have the answers they have been waiting for. Aaron Romero details why. NFL stars have launched a Twitter campaign from the weekend to demand formal COVID-19 protocols as the league opens training camps this week. Their cry, we want to play, 
but explained that getting back to the field must be with clear measures in place for their and their families' health and safety. On Monday afternoon, the NFL and NFL Players Association agreed that players, coaches, and designated staff who interact with them will undergo COVID-19 testing daily throughout the first two weeks of training camp, according to NFL Chief Medical Officer Dr. Alan Sills. The original plan had been to test every other day, but with a social media blitz, the two sides have agreed on daily testing for the first two weeks of training camp. Players will also be required to test a negative more than once before reporting to team activities. The aim is to minimize transmission of virus and mitigate risk of any player contracting the virus, Sills added. Players are also expected to wear proximity recording devices for any and all team activities, which will help officials contact Trace to quickly determine which individuals and infected players has come in contact with. Training camp for all 32 NFL teams will commence as previously scheduled, with veterans set to report on July 28, rookies on July 21, and quarterbacks and injured players on July 23. The exceptions to the standard reporting dates for the NFL training camp are the Chiefs and Texans, whose players were allowed to report early because they will play in the 2020 regular season opener Thursday, September 10, three days before the Sunday slate of Week 1 games. Aaron Romero, UNTV News and Rescue. We serve the people, we give glory to God. After careful consideration and a lot of internal deliberation, the International Cricket Council or ICC finally came to a decision to postpone the T20 World Cup because of the COVID-19 pandemic. According to ICC Chief Executive Manu Sani, in terms of safety and security of not just the teams, the players, but every person who is involved in making the tournament happen, and that's close to 20,000 accredited people who are required to run an event. He said they needed to factor in the amount of complexity that a world-class event where 16 teams brings in. The IBC board, the commercial subsidiary of the ICC, agreed to continue to monitor the rapidly changing situation and assess all the information available in order to make a considered decision on future hosts to ensure the sport is able to stage safe and successful successful global events in 2021 and 2022. The ICC Men's Cricket World Cup 2023 was moved to October until November to allow longer qualification period. You know, we went to a considerable amount of areas to focus on. We looked at options like air bubbles. We looked at options, could we have it in reduced venues? We looked at options, could we play behind closed doors? And we also looked at the various um, you know, information that we were getting from government authorities. And taking all that into consideration, uh, we then basically took, the board took the decision uh, of, of trying to, you know, postponing the COVID, uh, postponing the tournament. SpaceX launched South Korean communication satellite Anansis-2 aboard the Falcon 9 booster that lifted astronauts Doug Hurley and Bob Benkin on their mission to the International Space Station. The launch, which was originally scheduled for July 14, took place Cape Canaveral in Florida. Following change separation, SpaceX landed the Falcon 9 first stage on their drone ship called Just Read the Instruments instructions stationed in the Atlantic Ocean. The successful landing sets a new record at 51 days for the fastest turnaround time on a reusing a rocket. The ANSYS-2 satellite will serve South Korean military needs and its deployment was not shown on live video. Climate activist Greta Thunberg says that she will donate 100,000 euros to help tackle the spread of the coronavirus in the Amazon.
Amazon. On Monday, Thunberg announced on Twitter that the funds will be given to SOS Amazonia, a campaign led by climate protest group Fridays for Future Brazil. It will be the first donation to come from a $1.14 million the teen Swedish activist received for being awarded the Gulbenkian Prize for Humanity, which he said is an honor to be conferred with. This means a lot to me and I hope that it will that it will help me do more good in the world. And uh, the prize money, which is 1 million euros, that is more money than I can even begin to imagine, but all the prize money will be donated through my foundation to different organizations and projects who are working to, to help people on the front lines affected by the climate crisis and ecological crisis. And those are the reasons behind the news July 21, 2020. I am Harleen Delgado. We serve the people. We give glory to God. Reasons we deliver to you as they unfold. I'm Angelo Castro III. And I am William Theo because we need to know we will always ask why. Have a great evening.